It's important that we deeply understand Narcan because you're going to see opiate overdoses as an EMT. So the first thing you know about Narcan is Narcan is going to be our brand or trade name. Naloxone is a generic name. Now, the class of drug this is in, it's an opiate antagonist. So it's going to go to the mu opioid receptor in the body and it's going to block it down. So, for example, let's say we have our receptor. And let's say that we have a heroin currently attached to that receptor. And your patient has a, a sign, we're going to go over that in a little bit, of an opiate overdose, right? Well, how do we combat that? Narcan enters, goes to the receptor, blocks it down. So now heroin has no effect. Patient wakes up, right? Or at least gets the breathing control back to normal. A normal respiratory rate and can breathe again, right? Both are good scenarios. Now here, hang with me. The MOA, the opiate antagonist blocks the mu opiate receptor, acts as the antagonist that receptor. Great, we got that. This is very key. Next part is indications. When do we actually give it? We give Narcan when somebody takes an opiate and it, it is affecting, it's affecting negatively their respiratory drive, meaning their respiratory rate is too low. For an adult that's under 12, like 10, 8, or they're in respiratory arrest, they're not currently breathing, right? This is indication for giving Narcan. Other things you may see, like pinpoint pupils, right? Respiratory depression means they have a slow respiratory rate, right? Sluggish respirations. That's what we're looking for, right? That's your indication in the setting of opiate overdose, right? This is why we give it. It's an antidote for opiates, opiates, right? Now, contraindications. In this setting of your patient having respiratory depression and they're in either respiratory arrest, means they're not breathing, they're apneic, that means they're not breathing, or they have very slow, sluggish respirations. There's nothing that's going to stop us from giving Narcan. This patient needs it, right? It's very rare to have an allergy. People might say, oh, where's the allergy? It's it's very, I've, I've never even heard of one patient in my career having an allergy or Narcan, right? That would be an odd case. In this setting, though, this is a life-threatening thing. Oh, we got to get the Narcan, right? You know, right? So none in this setting that I've ever seen anyone have an allergy to Narcan. Now, adverse uh, effects. Confusion, agitation, alter mental status, kind of when they wake up, tachycardia, and combativeness. So there's two things. How many two things that can happen when we give Narcan, right? Well, I'll say three. One, the dose that we gave just wasn't enough. So nothing changes. Secondly, the patient can wake up and be totally wake up from being unresponsive to now responsive, the awake, combative, right? That can happen. The third thing, which is the best case scenario, patient wakes up calmly, more slowly, but just enough or their respirations are back to normal, but they don't wake up totally combative. That's the best case scenario. Now, we try to titrate to that, but it doesn't always happen. The big, most important thing is to wake the patient up, right? That's most important. We can deal with the combativeness and the agitation, just like we would if someone was having a seizure and they woke up and they're post very similar. Now the dosing, adult dose, this is like a national standard dose, would be two to four milligrams intranasally or intramuscularly, right? We know intranasal is very common. Now, IVIO would be like 0 0.42 milligrams, and then your pediatric dose would be 0 0.1 milligrams per kilogram for Narcan dosing. Now, I don't, I didn't write here special considerations, but I want to talk to you about this next and then go over our key signs and symptoms. These are some of our main special considerations. Let's go through each one. So first, Intranasal Narcan absolutely works, but it will take longer than IV access. So if we give Narcan IV, it's going to work almost instantly, pretty much, right? But it goes right to the vein, obviously. Intranasal Narcan, which is great, there's great absorption in, in theirs to get into the bloodstream. The issue is it will take time. Now, I've seen it take up to five to even 15 minutes sometimes to get the effect we're looking for. So what this means, be aware, it's not instant. So we still have to support ventilations, 
respirations of the patient while we're waiting for it to have its effect, right? So that's key to remember that, right? So in comparison, IV Narcan is gonna happen instantly. The problem is you have to get, you have to be able to get access. And sometimes it can be difficult to get IV access in these patients, right? Because the patient may be an IV drug user, right? Which is why intranasal Narcan is great. We just go up, get that, get that going, right? Then if we're at the paramedic level or advanced EMT, look for IV access throughout the call. So that's just an, an idea for you that you can use. Now, here's the key. If someone shows up in your ambulance and they say, I have taken an opiate and they are under the influence of an opiate and they are talking to you and they're wide awake and the respirations are fine, you do not give them Narcan. The reason why Narcan was produced is to treat the life-threatening respiratory distress, meaning someone's unresponsive and barely breathing or not breathing at all, which is like agonal respirations. They're not, they're, they're not breathing at all. They're unresponsive. There's cyanosis signs, right? We'll go into that in a little bit. There's pit point pupils. That's what we're looking at. Narcan gets them out of that respiratory arrest get them out of that respiratory depression state and back to normal respirations. That's the goal of Narcan is to fix the respiratory issue that the opiate is causing, okay? Now, the key here, fentanyl, you may have heard. So fentanyl is an extremely potent medication, right? That we even have an EMS, but it can also be used out in the street and the patient can take it. And then they may not even know that it's mixed in. So what can happen is you can have a, a scenario where either you have multiple opiates or they thought it was this opiate, but now it's fentanyl. They took too much. They're in an opiate overdose. You give Narcan, it doesn't even work. I gave you the normal dosing. You might have to give another dose or even double the dose. Of course, follow your protocol on that. And there probably will be a protocol on that setting in your uh, standing order. But just know that you may have to double the dose or give more dosing to get the effect you're looking for with like fentanyl, for example. So that's key too. Our clear cut sign and symptoms of an opiate overdose we have to watch for. And I'm gonna give you some of the names of some popular opiate medications. You can be on the alert for these to wrap this video up. Now, hang on, here's what we have here. Respiratory depression, what that means. Remember an adult patient that is a respiratory rate of under 12. So we're talking about 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, none, lower. The, when you get to this patient, most of the time, they're going to end up being unresponsive and in respiratory arrest. That is your classic case. So they're not breathing at all. They're apneic or in apnea. Pinpoint pupils bilaterally, okay, on both sides. Cyanosis is discoloration of the skin, blooming of the skin. It can happen in the skin can happen around the lips, right? Obviously the nail beds, but really look at around the lips. For example, you'll see skin. Unresponsiveness, so they're unresponsive, usually found again on the floor, because it could be you know slumped over, right, sitting, but usually on the floor from my experience. Now, two of the other pearls. I want, I'll do the start one last is what I want to tell you. Why did I write possible vomiting in the airway? Well, as a patient gets more sedated from the opiate, what can happen is nausea vomiting is very common with opiate overdose. So you should suspect there could be vomit in the airway. So what this means, if we're approaching the patient, we wanna have suction on standby. Again, if we're managing anyone's airway, we need to have suction on standby. Just a little pearl I want to remind you about, okay? So about the possible vomiting. Also, when they wake up, they may even have vomiting as well and be nauseous. So we wanna treat that. So just, just a quick pearl to keep in the back here about the vomiting, opiates. Okay, got it. Now here's a star one. How do we like really, that was just really, really like confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. It's not always gonna happen, my friends, but you may find that a bystander, a acquaintance, a friend, a witness is there to basically confirm, yeah, he or she overdosed. Like I was with them, or I was with her and they took this and now they're like this. And then you see all this, it's pretty clear cut. The reason I started is that it's not, oh, it's not always the case. A lot of times you find this patient 
a bystander goes, oh, someone's unresponsive and calls 911 and then they find out what it is. So this is key. These are the keys to look at. Now, before I go, I wanna give you just some medications, uh, some trade names to look at, some brand names of meds, so you don't get caught off guard. You know, oh, that's an opiate, I got you. These are some of the most common opiates that you might see. So we have fentanyl, heroin, we have Vicodin, also the hydrocodone, hydromorphone, that's Dilaudid, Dilaudid, Vicodin, so generic, generic, brand, brand name, right? Fentanyl is a brand name. Sublimase is generic with an S. Sublimase is for fentanyl, heroin is heroin. Morphine is morphine. Oxycodone, Oxycontin is our brand name. So this top section here are some of the most common opiates that you'll hear about. So keep on the lookout for those. Now, what are these two star down here? Well, if someone's being treated for opiate addiction, they may be taking one of these drugs to help out with that, either methadone or suboxone to help treat their addiction. So again, you can watch out for that on a med list as well. In the first link in the description down below is my study resource that I give to all my students who are either getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready for their national registry exams. It's lifetime access and it covers every single level of certification from EMR students all the way up to the paramedic level at EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic. It includes the entire video vault of videos that walks you through everything you see on the screen here and also quizzes and access to our community group. It's the first link in the description down below and I look forward to seeing your success. You're gonna see a video pop up on the screen right now. Check it out.